People who are called intellectuals are a very curious class, if you think about them. So take where I teach MIT. Uh, if there's a Nobel laureate in physics who's working 70 hours a week in his laboratory on problems of advanced physics, we don't call him an intellectual. If the janitor who cleans his room uh, happens to have a great deal of knowledge about world affairs and uh, a good deal of insight into human life and understanding, uh, uh, maybe more so than the people who write books. Uh, we don't call him an intellectual. Uh, intellectuals are people who have a certain degree of privilege, uh, enough to be able to reach audiences and who, do, uh, who discuss issues of general public interest. So yes, they have uh, given the privilege and the opportunities. Uh, they, of course, have greater responsibilities. Privilege confers responsibility. In fact, if you look at the history of intellectuals, it's not a pretty one. Uh, overwhelmingly, intellectuals have uh, labored in the service of power. The term intellectual entered modern Western usage uh, with the Dreyfus arts. Uh, and nowadays we respect and honor the Dreyfus arts, the defenders of Dreyfus, critics of the French state. It certainly wasn't true at the time. They were bitterly condemned. The leading, most prominent intellectuals had denounced them, had berated them for daring to criticize state power and the holy army and uh, what right did these uh, writers, uh, painters and so on have to talk about things they knew nothing about. The uh, respected intellectuals, the immortals of the Académie Française, uh, bitter, were bitterly hostile to the Dreyfus arts. In fact, Emile Zola, the leading one, had to flee France. Uh, that's typically the pattern. It, and it goes back in history as far as you like. I mean, back to the earliest recorded history, there were, were people who were approximately what we would call intellectuals today. So in classical Greece, uh, one of them was forced uh, to drink the hemlock because he was corrupting the youth of Ash Athens by asking embarrassing questions and challenging doctrine and dogma. Around the same time in the uh, a biblical record. Uh, there were uh, people who were basically intellectuals. They're called prophets, but that's just a bad translation of a pretty obscure Hebrew word. Uh, there were people who uh, uh, criticized the crimes of the king, uh, called for uh, mercy and compassion for the poor and deprived, uh, gave, uh, presented geopolitical analysis, warned of the uh, threats that the uh, evil kings were bringing to the people. So that's intellectuals. Now what happened to them? They were imprisoned, they were driven into the desert, they were condemned. Uh, they're later, centuries later, they were honored, not at the time. Uh, there were people, intellectuals who were honored, the flatterers at the court. Uh, centuries later, they were called false prophets. Uh, that's pretty much the pattern. So, for example, in the West, uh, Czech, and Czech dissidents were honored, and not at home, not by the ruling authorities. And conversely, uh, intellectuals in the American domains were by not only not honored, they were murdered straight out. Uh, so, for example, in the, a week after the fall of the Berlin Wall, uh, the uh, in, in the country that was the leading recipient of U.S. military aid, aside from Israel and Egypt, a separate category, and had the worst human rights record. That's a standard correlation. El Salvador, the high command, which is in close contact with the American embassy, uh, ordered a battalion of uh, troops to invade the university and murder six leading Latin American intellectuals, Jesuit priests, blow their brains out and kill any witnesses who happen to be around. So they also killed their housekeeper and daughter. Uh, I doubt if any of you could know their names even. 
Uh, but if, if anything like that had happened in Czechoslovakia, say, uh, probably had a nuclear war, we'd certainly have blaring headlines about it, and you'd know their names. But that's the difference. Uh, in your own crimes, you ignore uh, the crimes of your enemies you love and you admire and you uh, uh, praise the dissidents to the skies. Uh, that's the pattern right through history. Intellectuals don't have to do that as the fringe of dissidents illustrates, but that's typically what they do. Uh, but apart from that, they have uh, what they can do is what anyone else can do and more given the relative privilege that they have. Thank you.